All right, everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today we have another great restoration video. But real quick, I just wanted to remind everyone, horologyexchange.com is now live. It's a place you can go, you can get a quote to service, polish, pretty much take care of your watch, purchase a watch, or even sell or trade your watch. I've bought a ton of stuff, I've sold a ton of stuff. So guys, feel free to reach out anytime. Let's get into today's video. All right, so before we dive into this thing, we got a nice 16030. It's a stainless steel date just... And yes, I did have to get my hep C shot in order to do this restoration. You guys will see what I mean in a minute. This is what disease is made of. I don't know how it got this bad, but we're going to take care of it. So here's the backstory on this piece. This is actually one of you guys that reached out to me through the website. You wanted to get rid of a watch. This was previously owned by a family member. And I mean, as far as I know, he is a mechanic of over 50 years. He's the original owner of this watch. And he wore this thing daily. Used and abused, neglected for a little bit over 39 years. And it shows. I mean, this thing was filled with dirt, dust. I, I don't know, disease. I don't know what else to call it. But I mean, every single crack and crevice on this watch had something inside of it that shouldn't be there. To be honest with you, I think this is oil from oil changes. Should probably be in someone's Honda Civic. I have no idea. But this thing is just absolutely filthy in desperate need of restoration so we're gonna try and take care of this thing so funny enough actually when he reached out he said this thing was in pretty bad condition i kind of laughed at him and i said hey have you ever seen anything else that i've done before i'm not really too worried he just kept laughing at me and i really didn't understand why until i opened up the box this thing smelled like cigarettes it smells like it's been personally smoking for a little bit over 40 years i, I mean i just couldn't believe it this is probably the most neglected watch I've ever seen in my life. And I've bought some, I'll buy anything. I'll, I'll pretty much buy anything in any condition. But I mean, this thing kind of takes the cake. I mean, I can't believe it. So enough talking about it. Let's actually dive in. Let's start taking this thing apart. And boom, it was at this point I knew I made a grave mistake. Should have had gloves on. I called the old doctor. I said, hey, how are my charts looking? Do I have my hep C shot? Because I'm in some shit right now. All right, look at the end links on this watch. I, I mean, this, I, I don't even know what this is. I really have zero idea. I have no idea how it gets this bad. I, I, I don't know if this is skin. Is this oil? Is this dirt? You know, are you playing in the mud? I have absolutely no idea, but what I do know is this guy enjoyed his watch. This thing was with him anywhere and everywhere, you know, doing absolutely everything he was. But I mean, this is just nuts. Guys, you cannot let your watches get like this. It's not good. It really just is not. I don't know how this much dirt is packed in between these lugs. However, my main concern now is going to be rust. All right, a lot of standing water, a lot of moisture seems like we're gonna have a rusty restoration here hoping it's not but we're gonna keep on scraping away all this gunk see what we're left with so right here is where it's pretty much do or die i couldn't see the engravings in between the lugs so i didn't even know if this thing matched the paperwork that came with it but as i started scraping all this dirt just i don't even know what it is at this point we're just gonna call it dirt all right I mean, this thing's just absolutely filthy. I mean, guys, have you ever seen a watch in this condition? I personally have not. Let me know down in the comments if you've ever seen a watch this dirty. But as I scrape everything away, I'm starting to see the reference number. I'm starting to see the serial number. Everything matches, luckily. So I'm going to keep on pushing. So more good news. Luckily, in between these lugs, there's absolutely no rust. It looks like it's rust. However, it's just it's just dirt. So we're going to keep on moving along. We're going to try and take apart this bracelet now. We're going to try and get the bracelet out of the clasp here. And would you look at that? Seize pin. Fantastic. Love to see it. We'll deal with this a little bit later. Look at all this dirt. We're going to clean all this up. And we're going to keep on moving. Now we're going to try and clean off the case back. This is something you want to do prior to opening it up. I mean, there's just so much stuff packed in here. I don't want any of this stuff falling in the movement. 
But then again, I don't even know if the movement is any good. I don't know if it's running. I mean, it's starting, stopping. And the last thing I want is more dirt, more of a cleanup. So I'm going to take this case back off. And luckily, it's not that bad. So it's not running, but then just out of nowhere, it kicked on. So I'm not really entirely sure what's going on here. We're going to remove the movement from the case. Now you guys can take a better look. I mean, luckily, there's no rust on the inside. Just some basic case pitting. It's always happened when these things came into contact with the water. So we're going to reinsert the crown here. I'm going to try and start removing these hands. Always make sure you guys want to set the time where everything is lined up with one another. And now people always ask me, Peter, was this protective film? So this is just a basic wrap. I believe it's like two mil thick. This is pretty much what I use. It protects the dial. And more importantly, the hands come out all nice and they don't touch each other. So now we have the dial off and here's actually a little fun fact. So back in the day, Rolex used a few companies to produce dials for them. This is actually original Singer dial. So it's pretty cool. Moving right along, we're going to remove this auto wind here. Now, luckily, nothing seems to be, you know, in bad condition under here. First thing I do is always wind down the power of any movement. But if you guys notice, this crown is not spinning. I don't know how this movement is running. Apparently, there is no power in this mainspring. So we're going to remove this balance bridge here. This is the first thing I always like to get out of the way. Move the train wheel bridge, and then we can remove all the train wheels themselves. So now that those are out, we can continue moving along. Remove the pallet fork as well as the escape wheel. Guys, these are very small and delicate parts. These are usually the first things that break, so put them someplace safe. All right. Now, we're going to keep on removing everything off this barrel bridge here. And I'm honestly curious what's going on inside of this barrel. Now, it felt like it wasn't winding before. It was starting and stopping. So I'm really just curious. Remove the barrel and the bridge. Once we have this out, we're going to pop this thing open. And would you look at that. Now, I think that this is just some dried up braking grease. This is pretty much clogged up the mainspring itself. It's pretty much why it wasn't starting, stopping. You know, it really just wasn't running right. Now, we're going to keep on moving along here. First thing we want to do is remove the date disc. Now, this is something that you could easily scratch, so it makes sense. Let's get it out of the way first. Then we can move right along to the seating plate. Here's just a quick tip. Now, this date wheel mounted is actually held on with a reverse threaded screw. So you want to be careful with that. And then also be careful with the setting lever here. It's under immense pressure. If you let it hit the post, it's actually going to shoot the jewel into orbit. You'll never find the thing. Luckily, it stayed right on top because I was kind of doing that on purpose. Just to show you guys, I'm going to let out everything here. There's just a ton of dried up grease. Now, I'm a little bit concerned about these cap jewels. I don't think that this watch has ever been serviced. However, there's scratches all over it. So maybe someone was in here before. We're going to get everything put into the baskets. Then we get to throw it into the ultrasonic machine. And we can get this thing cleaned up. And of course, first step, always going to be Zenith 777. It's probably my favorite cleaner. I, I don't know what it is. I've tried just about everything out there. All the Zenith clock products, they're all fantastic. Highly recommended, but we're going to let this thing do its course. We can turn our attention over to the mid case. First thing we do here is we're going to pop off this bezel. Now, as soon as I remove this thing, I, I, I didn't know whether this was glue or just dirt and oil. I have no idea. This thing was stuck on there pretty good. I honestly think someone tried to seal this thing shut with some glue. This plexi crystal is absolutely wrecked, so we're going to remove that. And now we could turn our attention over to the cesspool of a bracelet. I mean, this thing is actually making me want to throw up a little bit. I've just never seen anything like this. Honestly, it's nothing but neglect. But then again, he probably paid like $800 for this watch back in the day. Nothing a little bit of ultrasonic. Nothing a little bit of elbow grease can't fix. Let's get everything going.
So while all the parts are being cleaned up, we got to do a little bit of housekeeping. Make sure you always have a clean bench. I mean, absolutely everything here was disgusting, so this all needed to be cleaned. I could dress any of my screwdrivers, any of my tweezer tips at this point, so pretty much just keep an eye on everything. And then as always, wipe everything down with a nice IPA. Now, everything's pretty much done in the cleaning machine. We're gonna turn on the heater, get this thing dried off, and then remove all the parts, start putting this thing back together. I don't know what it is about winding mainsprings, but this is probably my favorite part. Just something about this thing spinning around and then finally ending up in a nice spiral. I don't know what it is. It's just a fun thing to do. So we're going to put the mainspring on the winder here. I'm going to wind it up. Always want to make sure that you have this thing properly latched. If it's not latched on the little groove, it's not going to spin around. Always make sure to reverse thread it as well. Just so you can get everything unlatched and you can remove it off the post. There you go. Nice little flick. Got a nice spiral in there. New mainspring. Now these are one of those pre-rolled up ones. I personally like to unwind it, clean it, and then re-lubricate it myself. Toss the cover back onto the barrel here. And then we can close everything up. Now our barrel's complete, so we're going to start moving over to everything that makes this thing run. Skate wheel right into epilum dry it off make sure everything's good i like to put the escape wheel down first then we can put all the train wheels in and then we can finally put the bridge on top this will allow me to check everything check all the free play make sure everything's seated correctly and then we're good to go so you always want to make sure that you're checking end shake both on the barrel as well as all the wheels under the train wheel bridge Unfortunately, the original train wheel bridge did have a cracked jewel, so I had to use a pre-owned one that I had laying around. Now, of course, I'm lubricating everything as I go along. I'm just not showing it that in depth. But yes, rest assured, absolutely everything that requires lubrication is getting it. Plus, the video will be an hour and a half long. I don't think anyone wants to sit around and do that. So we got the ratchet wheel on, we got the barrel and the bridge all together. Now we could start reassembling the keyless works course first thing we want to do paint those brigade teeth guys you want to make sure it's a thin application this stuff will spread itself out i'm going to put some more 9504 on the walls there and then we can reinsert the crown and stem now we have our balance stop going in once again this is another very thin part very easy to bend so you always want to be careful when reassembling this stuff make sure everything's working before moving on to the next step now back to dial side down we're going to epilum this pallet fork usually i like to just get it on the stones as that's where the oil is going everything's reassembled there we'll toss this balance right back on and this thing fired right up now i think that that mainspring that really helped it now of course we're going to put the screw back in secure everything and then we can check our results on the time grapher now come on stop playing with me you guys already know I'm not one of these guys that just tests and dial side up, calls it a day. Absolutely not. You guys are going to notice here our amplitude's looking a little bit low. This thing was not fully wound, so I'm going to wind it up fully, flip it up dial side, and test in all positions. So, as you guys can see, our amplitude has increased. We're losing about 2 seconds per day with a consistent 0.2 beat error. But as you guys can see by this line, we don't have an open line. We have a nice, consistent, solid line. Good amplitude, as well as a good rate between different positions. I'm pretty happy with this, so we're going to move this thing along, get it fully rebuilt. Now our date disc is back in, we have a nice click, now we could always test, always test. I can't tell you guys how important this is, so first thing I always do, make sure you test absolutely everything. The last thing you want to do is get this thing back together and realize you have problems. Alright, our quick set is working flawlessly, now we're going to make sure that our date wheel mounted is spinning over and the date is adjusting accordingly. Dial goes back on, and we're getting really close to the finish line here. So once the dial is put on, make sure everything is laying flat and then go ahead and secure it via the screws on either side of the movement. Once that's all good, now we can reinstall our hands. Now the way I like to do this is spin the time around until it flips to the next date, obviously, and then line everything up at 12 o'clock. 
Once these are all perfectly centered, everything can be pushed down. Make sure that we have proper clearances. Make sure nothing's binding up or touching any of the indices or colliding with any of the hands. And then we're pretty much good to go from here. Slap on the second hand and let this thing run for a little while. So now with the movement fully complete, we can cover this thing up and get it out of the way. Now we can turn our attention over to the automatic module and start reassembling it. Now for the 3035, I like to install all these wheels and pretty much reassemble this thing upside down. Now this may be the normal way of doing it, however this just makes it a lot easier for me. I know that all the posts are sitting in the correct jewels, everything is seated properly, more importantly so when I go to throw down that cover, everything's good to go. And now we have the bridge on, and lastly we have a few screws, we can tighten all this down, and then lubricate all the jewels, and then we're good to go with this. So right about at this point, I realized something was wrong. I had absolutely no pieces left, and that's kind of when I realized that something wasn't there. Now they call this thing a Jesus clip for a reason, because as soon as you lose it, that's all you're going to be screaming. Luckily for me, it must have flew out of one of the baskets, sitting in the cleaning jar. This thing is so small, you'll lose it in a second. Alright, but luckily we found it, we could slap this thing back on, and then we're good to go. Now, to probably my favorite part, the actual cleanup of the case. Now guys, I wasn't going for 100% perfection. All right, you could easily ruin a case like this. I mean, this thing was in great condition to start with. So all the small pits and little things, I really didn't want to grind them down and ruin the profile. All right, as you guys can see here, we have absolutely no distortion. We've achieved perfect flatness pretty much across both sides of the case. We have beautiful lugs. Everything's lapped properly. And more importantly, once again, we have a great reflection. This is what you want to see in a polish. As soon as you start going crazy with it, everything becomes over polished and it just doesn't sit well with me. But the rest of the parts are out of the ultrasonic cleaning machine. Everything's polished up and I'm really happy with the outcome here. I've absolutely no issue. This thing came out beautifully. Now, I don't want to go out and say that I achieved 100% perfection. I mean, there's a lot more machinery that I would need in terms like a lapping machine. It's the only way to ensure that these bezel flutes get cut down and they're perfectly flat. This thing has a two-tone appearance, so I made sure to put all the original finishes back on. And now, we could start reassembling this movement. We're one step closer, this thing's about to be cased up and done. So now we can reinstall the crown and stem here. Guys, you want to make sure that you're not putting a ton of pressure. This thing should click right into place, and then you should always be able to test the functions right after. Now we see everything's winding, everything's nice and smooth, so we could secure this movement inside of the case. And lastly, to button this thing up, we're going to throw back on the automatic module. Now once this thing is seated, I like to just give it a quick wind, make sure that everything is working properly, then we could secure it down with the three screws. Now checking the rotor, making sure that this thing is running perfectly, all the wheels are engaging, nice and smooth, this thing has full range of motion, and now we could slap back on the bezel. So now our bezel's back down, and as you guys can see, I'm actually running a sapphire crystal on this watch. Now I get it, it's not period correct, however, I hate plexi crystals, I think that they're absolutely useless. But with a tall gasket, you can run a sapphire crystal. Now we're going to reinstall the bracelet. Everything's back on the watch. I mean, just take a look at this thing. Came out absolutely beautifully. Very happy with the lugs. Very happy with the bracelet itself. Just keep on going. We're very close to getting this thing back together. We just need to install a clasp now. And then we're pretty much good to go. And now we have the final screw going into the bracelet. We have a new pin in the clasp and this watch is done. And would you look at that guys, 
final results here. I, I mean, this thing turned out absolutely fantastic. I really didn't expect to be doing something like this. I know it's not that crazy of a restoration, but I mean, this thing was just in a horrible state. And I mean, this thing looks damn near brand new. Very happy with the outcome. Now, I know other people were asking me, hey, can you rebuild the bracelet? Absolutely, I can. However, it is very time consuming. Now, for the cost that I paid for this watch and what I'm selling it for, it didn't really justify my time as it wasn't going to add any more value. But I mean, pretty much we just went for a full restoration here. We wanted to clean this thing up, make sure it's running correctly. More importantly, this is something someone could put on their wrist and enjoy for another 40 years. But that's pretty much going to do it for today's episode. Guys, thank you so much for tuning back in. Don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe. Check out horologyexchange.com and give me a follow on Instagram. I have a few more videos coming out this month. Stay tuned and don't forget to tune back in. Catch you on the next one.